And we do begin with some breaking news. Crews responding to a fire at a motel in Oceanside. It started just after 4 a.m. in the 1800 block of South Coast Highway. You can see in this video here firefighters on the roof of Oceanside Inn and Suites. No word if anyone was hurt or how this fire started. Right now, Coast Highway is closed in both directions between Cassidy Street and Kelly Street. Freeman Street is also closed between Cassidy and Kelly Streets. You're asked to use alternative routes right now. We are working to get you updates on this. We'll bring you new information as we get it. And this morning, the suspect is in jail following the stabbing death of a woman at a local park. Glad you're with us in our 6 a.m. hour. I'm Eric Connor and I'm Carrie Lane in Fernetta, Aranpour. San Diego police announced the arrest late last night. The stabbing happened at the Central Avenue Mini Park in City Heights yesterday morning while the victim was exercising. CBS 8's Chris Grow is live at SDPD headquarters now with more on what police are still asking for from the public here. Chris. Yeah, good morning. They're asking for a little bit more help trying to figure out exactly what the motive could be. But right now, 23 year old uh, excuse me, Hamala Silvanusi Patafale has been arrested and charged in this stabbing. Now, police believe that he's the one who attacked this 65 year old woman. The attack took place in the City Heights neighborhood at that Central Avenue mini park. Now, police got the call around 830 in the morning that a woman was found with multiple stab wounds. They were described as catastrophic. The woman was reportedly just exercising before she was attacked. And then they did see someone leaving the area on foot. Those witnesses that called police. Now, Patafale was arrested last night, hours after the attack. When we spoke with police before he was arrested, they told us they believe that this was an isolated incident, but that residents should just take normal precautions directly after something like this happens. And as for a motive, again, nothing has been released. So this sort of seemingly random attack still very much under investigation, even though Patafale has been taken into custody. Now, as you could see, we did have that picture of him uh, after uh, that was released again and trying to identify him. Uh, but as for a mugshot or any other type of identifying information other than age, we are still waiting to hear maybe a little bit more uh, about him as well as that 65 year old victim. So as new information is released, we'll be sure to let you know. And if you think you know anything about this attack, you are being asked to call the San Diego Police Department. Eric and Carrie. Chris Grow with the update. Thank you, Chris. This morning, the Sheriff's Department says the search is over for a missing hiker in Julian. Volunteer divers found his body yesterday afternoon. They recovered it from the middle pool of Three Sisters Falls. The man went missing on Friday, but divers couldn't search the water until yesterday because the current was too dangerous. The Sheriff's Department says the body has been turned over to the medical examiner's office for identification. This morning, the mother of two kids who were hit by a car and killed is under arrest and facing multiple charges. It happened Sunday in Vista. Authorities say 33 year old Sandra Ortiz stopped her car after a piece of luggage fell off the roof onto the eastbound lanes of the 78. They say Ortiz then told her 10 and 16 year old kids to run into the middle of the highway and get it. Both kids were hit by a car and died at the scene. The driver of the car who hit them was not arrested. Their mother faces multiple charges, including DUI, gross vehicular manslaughter, and child endangerment. She's set to appear in court on Thursday. Right now, police are still working to find the gunman responsible for a deadly shooting at a park near Liberty Station. It happened Saturday night as a Juneteenth celebration was wrapping up at NTC Park. A 20-year-old man died. Another man in his 20s was injured but is expected to recover. Police say the shooting happened after an argument. The largest infrastructure project in San Diego's history was partially shut down an intersection in University City. Pipeline construction is underway at La Jolla Village Drive and Town Center Drive. Now for the next two weeks out here, traffic at this intersection will be impacted by this construction. The Pure Water Project will produce millions of gallons of drinking water a day by cleaning wastewater. It will cut down the need for imported water and eventually provide half of San Diego's water supply. Construction is set to wrap up on around July 2nd. Until then, though, the city recommends using the 5 to get to University City instead of the 805. And this morning, MTS services still recovering after a weeks long bus driver strike came to an end. MTS here saying that the South Bay routes do not have service, but they are seeing reduced. I'm sorry, they do have service right now, but they are seeing reduced frequency for all those uh, weeks. They did not have service, but they do have service now. Right now, fares are being waived on affected routes. You can see that full list on the MTS website. Also, minibus routes still have very limited service because those workers are still on strike. 
Right now, rescuers from the U.S. and Canada are racing to find a small submarine that went missing at the bottom of the northern Atlantic. The U.S. Coast Guard has confirmed that five people were on board the vessel, which explores the wreckage of the Titanic. Jared Hill has the latest on the search and what we're learning about the people that were on board. The U.S. Coast Guard is leading the desperate multinational search for a submersible that disappeared deep into the North Atlantic Sunday. Officials say it lost communication about an hour and a half into its dive to explore the wreckage of the Titanic. It is uh, a challenge to conduct a uh, search in that remote area, but we are deploying all available assets. The minivan-sized vessel named Titan has enough oxygen to last for about four days. It's owned and operated by OceanGate, a company that takes tourists on deep-sea exploration for a quarter million dollar price tag. CBS Sunday Morning correspondent David Pogue got an up-close look at the watercraft over a year ago. There is no radio and no GPS that works underwater, so you really are on your own when you're in this thing. British billionaire and explorer Hamish Harding is believed to be among those on the mission, according to his recent social media posts and family members. Hamish is larger than life. Harding's friend, Yannicka Mickelson, has gone on expeditions with him in the past. She says that she spoke with him before he left. The last thing I said to him was Godspeed, and I wished him luck with his dive. Reuters reports that the Pakistani businessman Shazada Dawood and his son may also be on the mission, citing a statement from their family. Jared Hill, CBS News. OceanGate said in a statement that its entire focus is on the crew members in the submarine and their families, and the company is working toward the safe return of all crew members. Let's take a peek outside here on this Tuesday. How is the forecast shaping up? More uh, cloud coverage at the coast. Let me guess. <laughs> well, you are correct. <laughs> However, it's less cloud cover than what we saw yesterday. So there's something to run with here. And the reason why is because those onshore winds that we saw very gusty yesterday, strong onshore winds, are starting to weaken a bit. So today and tomorrow, as those winds weaken, we'll see two things happen. We'll see fewer clouds on hand, and we'll also see slightly warmer temperatures on hand, too. This afternoon, we have more 70s in the mix, 71 along the coast, 75 inland. By the time we get to tomorrow afternoon, we're expecting to see a couple low 80s toward our eastern valleys. So it's going to be a pretty comfortable, very summer-like day everywhere east of the coast. But along the coast, we're still mostly cooler than average with that dense layer of clouds sticking around. Clouds are still quite widespread right now. They're in some cases, as you move farther off toward the east, a little more patchy, and that cloud cover is not stretching as far east as it did for previous mornings, and that's again because of that weakening uh, onshore flow. So you will start to see a little bit of blue peeking through. Very mild start to the morning compared to what the last six eight weeks have brought us and then take a look at Santee and El Cajon. These are your forecast highs for this afternoon. There's a good chance that with that weakening onshore flow that tomorrow afternoon we'll see even more warming and that could bring spots like Santee and El Cajon to the 80s tomorrow. Along the coast, we're still going to stay in the 60s. La Jolla PB perfect examples 66 and 68 degrees. Head up to North County. Oceanside's going to peak at 73. Fallbrook Vista and San Marcos 73 and Poway Escondido. Rancho Bernardo all making their way to 75 degrees for that afternoon high across the mountains. Again, pretty comfortable. Plenty of sunshine this afternoon. Still watching out for some blowing dust. Uh, there are air quality alerts off to the east of us toward Imperial County, but not for San Diego County, and that is because those winds are still very gusty at times, just not quite as active as yesterday. It is 609 and let's take a look at your border wait times. The CBP website says it, it is a 60 minute wait right now for the San Ysidro Port of Entry. O time Mesa Port of Entry, you're looking at a 40 minute wait time. Once you get uh, onto our highways, you can head to cbsa.com slash traffic. It's got the latest on what our roads look like here across the county. Back to you.